ಚಿಕ್ಕಪ್ಪನ ಫೇವ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿಶಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಮಟನ್ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ ಚಿಲ್ಲಿ ಚಿಕನ್ನು ಕಬಾಬ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಆ ಗೋಂಗ್ರಾ ಚಿಕನ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಪಪ್ಪು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಫಿಶ್ ಫ್ರೈ ಮಟನ್ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ ಮಟನ್ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ ಚಿಕನ್ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ ಚಿಕನ್ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ of the crunch of the chicken and on the inside the bird is moist mm. this is a sort of biryani that whispers to you you've come home i think next we should try that gongura chop we are at hotel navayuga an eatery that i visited only a few months ago with anchor anushree and actor vinay rajkumar nephew of Karnataka Ratna Namma Priyoru someone who will remain in our hearts forever Puneet Rajkumar Appu sir So I am told this was one of Appu sir's most favorite eateries So our dik chikka also had this one thing en andre ega ondo one restaurant pass at takshana you'll just know you wouldn't have read about it or anything one vibe anta sigutte illu uta chanagirutte anta So Chikapa, I think he had that vibe. Ah, good thing to worry. In North Texas, mostly it's Chennai. It's that order of that. So Chikapa's favorite dishes are mutton biryani, chili chicken, kebab, or gongra chicken. It's that. Or pappu, or fish fry. Even now, like for every grand, my grandfather's birthday, twenty-fourth. So all in the Hanur Jane ke uta manek kar sakte. Oh, sour treat thara. So now you go hotel or na manek hai and. ನೂರು ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಎವ್ರಿ ಇಯರ್ ತಪ್ಪದೆ ಕಳಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಡೋಸ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸೀನ್ ಮೈ ಜೋಳದ ರೊಟ್ಟಿ ಊಟ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಪ್ಪು ಸರ್ ನಾವು ಜೋಳದ ರೊಟ್ಟಿ ಊಟ ತಿಂತಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಬಟ್ ಆರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ Biryani is being woken from its slumber. When I stepped into Navayuga I thought it was packed because almost every table was taken and I went in and I shot my kitchen sequence and as I emerged out there was not a single chair visible every single seat was taken and even now around me you can hear the humdrum of the clientele that this eatery has been drawing for the last 40 years. ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಒಂದು ಕಬಾಬ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಚಿಲ್ಲಿ ಚಿಕನ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಒಂದು ಫಿಶ್ ಫ್ರೈ ಕೊಡಿ ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಬಿರಿಯಾನಿ ಎರಡು ಸಾವಿರ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಮತ್ತೆ ಚಾಪ್ಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಆ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅನ್ನ ಹೈ ಟ್ರಾಸ್ ಪಪ್ಪು ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಡೂ ದ ಪಪ್ಪು ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕೂರ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಐ ರಿಯಲಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ದಿ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಟ್ ಬಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ to be honest i am quite literally shouting to make myself heard not just to the camera but also to myself such is the buzz at this place namaskara you want a pic yeah. come come thank you sir thank you see you yeah sure I love the energy at places like these. You can smell the food in the air and of course also when you watch people here tucking into that biryani, savoring their chilies, devouring those kebabs, you know that they here for their food, for the love of food. This is a sort of place that does honest tasty fare. And uh, there's no other formula to places like these. It's about doing great food and doing great food consistently well. Mutton biryani. Mutton biryani. Mutton. Ah, ah chicken biryani chicken biryani yes. well we're making a beginning now finally we've done our b-rolls we've done the shots of the food and i can't wait to get to the dishes so what do we have here 
So we of course have the fish fry here that we saw being made in that very special Navayuga style with that very thin liquidy sort of masala. We have then two chicken dishes out here. So this is of course the chili chicken, very popular, very special out here. The kebab, the chicken kebab and then mutton chops in the gongura gravy, the sorel gravy. And then the two biryanis, the chicken and the mutton. And the only reason why I have two wedges of lime on this biryani is to let me know that this is the mutton and that is the chicken. Let's taste some of that chicken kebab. There's a kebab that feels rather crunchy to the touch. I was asking that kebab master, I said, how do you ensure that the chicken is cooked all the way in through? He says two things. One is the color of the chicken. And then as it has fried for about seven minutes or so, then I want to feel its crisp exterior and also a slightly springy sort of a touch. And that tells me that the chicken is cooked all the way through. Mm. I love the crunch of the chicken. And on the inside, the bird is moist. As I walked in, I think I saw a biryani and a kebab on almost every table. Tells you of the popularity of this dish. I have to go for one more piece of the kebab. This one with a little more meat. Ah, you can see the juiciness of that kebab. Crisp on the outside and moist within. Mm. And that piece of meat is exceptionally soft. I think this is a chicken thigh. And therefore, it also has a bit more of its juicy fat to lend to that crunchy, slightly moist texture of the kebab. Delicious. The crust of that kebab too is quite tasty. And like they say, upu kara, perfect is that. And now to taste some of that fish fry. That fish fry that we saw being cooked to a rather special technique. What was most striking to me was the consistency of that masala. It was almost like water. So when they take the fish out from the marinade and they place it on the tawa, after it sizzles for a few minutes, they then ladle some of that masala liquid onto the fish. So the fish is both frying and poaching at the same time. And once the fish has had the opportunity to soak up the masala, they then tip off that tawa to let some of the excess masala run out and the rest of the masala folds on to the fish before that second dry masala is added. There's a wedge of lemon here, but when it comes to a fish fry, I believe you should always first taste it in the manner that the cook has prepared it for you. Before you reach for the lemon, before you reach for the pepper and the salt, taste it as is. And only if you need to add something a little more, then do so. The skin has almost a slightly crispy sort of a texture. If you want it to be crisper, they can also do a deep fry for you. But I wanted to taste it just as is of the tawa. Because the fish is cooked in that technique, in that fry and poaching technique, this is a fish that is firm and also a bit soft. It doesn't have too crisp an exterior with that masala crust etc. But that masala, especially that second masala, I can taste some of the coriander in there, some of the fenugreek in there, has done well to penetrate that fish. I think this will also be very nice if you have some rice, some pappu and a bit of the fish to tug at in between a bite or two. Mm. I'm now torn. I don't know what to taste first. Whether I should taste the biryani or should I taste the chili chicken or the chops? Biryani. Yeah. Along with the chicken Mr. Rao Jr. here says no, taste the biryani first. And I want to taste the chicken biryani first. Because I think once you taste the mutton biryani and if you're a mutton lover, that chicken biryani is a tough time trying to seduce your palate. So 
some of the siraka samba rice with a piece of meat that rice is still nice and warm i can see plenty of the remnants of the onions there's some coriander mint too that i see through that biryani some green chilies too there is no red chili powder that goes into it the spicing comes from of course the aromatics and also the green chili the biryani is nice and moist i can definitely taste the flavor of that masala of that spice mix that i saw i can certainly register the pointed heat of the green chili and then the lingering warmth of some cinnamon some cloves on my palate mm. always when you taste a biryani it is a rice is a rice is a sort that makes you reach for nothing else around that biryani has done its job also in this biryani i'm tasting more the heat that comes from the green chili because i suspect as opposed to the mutton there's not enough fat that the chicken has of course there's some nei some ghee that goes on the top after that biryani emerges from dum but the chicken doesn't have its own fat to cut through the spice of that green chili so therefore you're certainly tasting a bit of the spicy edge of the chili on the tip of your tongue and now for a piece of the meat the meat is nice and soft mm. and quite juicy too sometimes i find when you taste chicken biryanis the meat on the inside can be a bit dry especially if it's a breast piece or something like that but out here that meat has enough moistness to go well with that slightly spicy biryani rice I love this when the meat slides off the bone. Go for a bit of that chicken marrow too. Don't waste anything. That tara, chili spice is slightly registering to me in this chicken biryani. I think on that note, we should say hello to that mutton biryani, and perhaps if the chili. the green chili gets a bit to you that's also where this onion and yogurt raita will come handy to wash away some of that spice that's holding on to your tongue mutton roast mutton ghee roast ghee roast ah mutton ghee roast idu mutton fry wonderful Just the idea, lah. I ordered my dishes, but they said you have to try the fry too. And he said ghee roast, the magic words that appeal to me right away. And there's a mutton fry. There's a second piece of meat that's almost requesting me. I too want to join the party, so why not? I've not tasted it yet, but the character of the mutton meat with a bit of that oily fat has already made its presence felt to my nose mm. this is sort of biryani that whispers to you you've come home the sort of comforting feeling that you get when you arrive home after a few days out well that's exactly my state of mind in the chicken biryani I could taste that spiciness of the green chili, but out here, I'm tasting none of that. Instead, I'm tasting the lingering warmth of some of the aromatic spices, because that fat in that mutton quite literally cuts through the spiciness of the green chili. That biryani is very gentle, very gentle. I love the fat that's ribbon through the meat. The meat is pink, tender. Taste it in your mouth. Exert the lightest of bite. That meat gives it readily. I just had to suck that meat of the cartilage. No biting, no pressure exerted. That's how soft the meat is. If you like your biryani to be spicy, 
then I think the chicken biryani definitely lets that green chili register quite solidly on your palate. But if you like your biryani to be well rounded, gentle, delicate in its aromas and its flavors, with a bit of the lushness that comes from the character of the meat and the meat fat, well then the mutton biryani it is for you. Now let's taste some of that chili chicken. I can taste the fruity spiciness of the chilies in this. If you leave aside the heat of the chili, the chili also has a certain fleshiness. And that flavor too I can taste in that chili chicken. It certainly is a sort that leaves its mark on your palate. I think next let's taste some of that mutton roast. Is that garlic or is that cashew? Mmm. There's some tender cashew in that. That sweetness of the cashew. Again, there's a flavor of the curry leaf, but I suspect there's a fair bit of spicing that goes in to fortify this masala. So when you taste green chilli spice, in a manner of speaking, that spicing is quite refreshing. But when you taste a combination of pepper and red chilies, it's a sort of spicing that coats your tongue entirely and is also the sort that doesn't let go of easily. And that's what I'm tasting here. There's also some ghee that goes in, but that pepper and the red chilli spice is certainly what is resonating mostly on my palate. And in a manner of speaking, that garlic and that tender cashew also helps cut some of that peppery red chilli heat. This is a preparation that would go extremely well with some annam and some charu, some rasam. Well, I thought I was almost done. But then, if you look at my table, it's filling in reverse. So as opposed to the five dishes that I had, the five katoris that I had, now probably I have over a dozen. But I said I should also try some of the annam here. Because what a lot of the people also do is, they come here for the meals. And the meals includes the annam, which of course has some nehi that's topped on it, with a papula podi, with some chutney. Today is a mulangi pachidi. There's a pappu here, which is the spinach pappu. There is a pumpkin sambar and the rasam and of course the perugu and the buttermilk. So that's what people have and then they will order one of the sides. We've of course gone the other way around. We've ordered all the sides, all the biryanis and then we are finally closing things with the annam, with the rice. Make a nice mix of the podi and the annam and the nehi. Bring it together. Quite a punchy podi. I suspect also to go with the flavor profile of some of the other dishes that I'm tasting here. Perhaps a little more knee would certainly have helped. Well, I've lost track of all the dishes that I've ordered here. There is a mutton fry that is also waiting to be tasted. Plenty of onions, tomatoes that have gone into its making. Definitely tasting the roasted flavors of the onions in there. And also I think as the meat is cooked, as the meat is tossed in that masala, its fat also combines with the onions and tomato puree, giving the flavors of that masala a nice, luscious, fatty sort of a edge. Mm. What I also appreciate here is the cut of the meat. So there is of course the flesh, but there's also a bit of fat that's ribboned through it. And that helps elevate the flavor a few notches. And there's also a bit of sweetness that you taste in the caramelized edge of the onions. A bit of the chutney. I can taste the flavor of some gingerly oil and some of that mustard in that. Some tomato. 
you've tasted so many dishes i began i don't even know where i began i think i began with a kebab i went to the fish fry and then i tasted the biryanis the chicken followed by the mutton and then i tasted some of the chili chicken i tasted that mutton roast i tasted the mutton fry some of the pappu somewhere your palate feels a little jaded feels a little tired that's where i think that chutney comes into play and that is a pumpkin chutney i also love the nuttiness of the sesame that comes through in that chutney almost bitter but helps cut through all that you've tasted and in a manner of speaking also refreshes your palate i think next we should try that bongura chop because that mutton has cooled down a bit but i think before i taste the meat i want to taste the gravy with that rice this is a lovely flavor that i'm registering in that bongura chop but i can also taste the flavor of some kasuri methi dried fenugreek yeah thank you i want to taste some more of that rasa i can taste somewhere a bit of the tartness of the gongura but it isn't packing in its intensity out here again taste its slightly acidic character but i'm also tasting the flavors of some kasuri methi some dried fenugreek that have probably gone on the dish as it was being finished but when you taste the gravy by itself that's when that gongura definitely makes its presence felt a little more assertively you know one of the things that happens when i'm tasting especially when i do indulge in tastings like these by the time sometimes i get to the last dish it would have lost some of its vigor that comes with temperature but having said that the meat is cooked rather well it's holding on to the flavors of its curry and if you were to taste it piping hot wow maja hi maja some fiber pura here or some chickpeas some carrot some beans plenty of onions a little bit of coconut you can register the sweetness that's coming from the onions some more rice because i want to close things here with a little bit of the rasam the pappu and the sambar that papu is nice and warm i love the sarnes of the chintapandu that's registering somewhere in there i can taste a bunch of different things i can taste the sasve the mustard seeds somewhere a bit of the cumin sometimes when you have so many dishes you get distracted but to be honest all that you need to make a good andhra meal is of course the rice and some sambar rasam and perhaps one or two dishes on the side i think most people won't really order the manner that i do but i do so so that i can present to you the entire spectrum of what's available at a place like navayuga and i must tell you there are still half the dishes in the kitchen that i haven't tasted yet but that's for you to find for you to discover when you come here and if you do so do taste do let me know in the comments below some of the dishes that you tasted that i didn't and perhaps i should the next time i'm here now for some of that pumpkin sambar oh that sambar is hot vedi ga undi i think the starchy character of the pumpkin also makes it a great sponge of the flavors of the sambar without compromising its texture it still manages to hold on to its starchy form I can certainly taste the ripe, pulpy acidity of the tomatoes. The sweet acidity of the tomatoes in this pickle. 
quite sharp and avakaya right now it's still very young therefore the colors also are much brighter but as that pickle ages its flavors will soften and also the color will lighten a bit that's when that avakaya would be perfect to taste with some annam sambar rasam some rasam on the rice but this is also the sort of rasam with all that garlic floating around That's a delicious slurp to close your meal. And last but not the least, a bit of perugu to provide some cooling respite at the end of what has been a rather indulgent meal. is one word in kannada that describes my state of mind right now trupti i feel content each one of the dishes that i tasted were a sort that left behind an impression on my palate each dish has its own set of masalas each dish has its own preparation style and that helps in giving each dish its own unique flavor taste profile and personality and the crowds that i see even now at 3:15 pm swarming the restaurant a testament to the kind of food that they've been dishing out at hotel navayuga for the last 40 years what i found in mr mohan rao and his son srinivas rao and also the cooks that i met in the kitchen was a certain commitment to doing things to cooking dishes in a certain way when mr mohan rao began this business first he began this out of necessity he did not find a job he said let me do a restaurant so he bought a cook from nellore and over a period of time that cook trained other cooks many of whom are here in the restaurant 30 years 40 years on and it's that commitment to doing things in a certain way a certain old fashioned way for instance the biryani is here are only cooked on a wood fired stove i think it is that attribute of this eatery that has endured itself to hundreds and thousands of diners over the years from the common man to some of the most illustrious luminaries of life here in Karnataka so if you want a taste of what makes an andhra meal here special definitely find your way to hotel navayuga i hope you've enjoyed this episode until the next time take care stay safe stay strong and happy eating If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe like share and leave a comment below happy eating